Morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Morning Heart Devotion. Thank you for joining us. Let's start off by offering a greeting about our heavenly parents and true parents. Chonjin Chamwonimke Kyombe. Baro. And now to lead us through the family pledge, I'd like to invite a Reverend Milhan Stevens. Kajongmen Se, Il, Chaneo Gup Juin. 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 번향 땅을 찾아 본연의 창조의 상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 장건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 이 천혜급 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며. 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 효자, 국가에서는 중심, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 천혜국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 4대 심정권과 3대 왕권과 황족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 천혜국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조 이상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 5. 천혜어급 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상 세계와 대상적 지상 세계의 통일을 향해 천진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 천혜어급 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님의 대신 가정으로서 천운을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 천혜어급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 본연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 심정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 천혜어급 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 천혜어급 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Thank you very much, Reverend Melhan Stevens. And now to open us up in prayer, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Shimio. Dr. Shimio. Okay, good morning. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Parent, thank you so much for this morning. Again, we will be able to teach something so precious from Dr. Yon. We are so grateful to this moment for such a long time throughout human history. You have been going through tremendous hardship and difficulty. And by studying and learning more about your miserable condition, we really want to become filial sons and daughters to liberate your, you from the realm of sadness and sorrow and uh, we really want to work hard to restore America and also the whole world. Heavenly Parent, we simply want to make you so happy because you are our parent. You are our parent and we are your children. Thank you so much for this morning. Let's have a real wonderful time, and wonderful fellowship centered upon you and your parents and, and the leadership of Dr. Yon. 
Again, thank you so much for this time, and I want to offer this prayer in the name of Theodore and Sumiya Shimyo, blessed and her family. Adieu. 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 Thank you so much for such an inspiring uh, opening prayer to open us up today. Brothers and sisters, let's go into our breakouts for gratitude. So let's take the next seven minutes to think about what you're grateful for, um, share with one another, and then we'll be back here to share with everyone else. So we'll see you all in seven minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful sharing in your breakouts. Um, I had the opportunity to be with Megumi Lindstrom and Yuko Maskiotra. Amazing, amazing last names. Uh, I'd like to invite up Megumi Sam, if you could please unmute and share with us your gratitude points this morning. Well, uh, hi, good morning, everybody. And yes, I was with Yuko Sam first and we sharing. Um, last year, uh, my husband and myself and one child, our son, attend more than, I think maybe more than eight times, uh, Chombo online, uh, Ansu, uh, uh, Yakuji. And my husband and myself, we have a, a short temper. And in the past, if my husband mad and I will be mad, and then I lo lose three days because I don't want to talk to him. And I, I can feel, oh my gosh, again, I lose time. But I repeat so many times, I really over, uh, want to overcome, but I couldn't. But uh, <clears throat> last year, <laughs> and then I, can, I could feel evil spirit leaving from Bali. And really my husband changed so much. And also my ch I changed too. But it's so hard to remove our fallen nature. And who cannot attend uh, online, um, I found out uh, uh, Chinese uh, evil spirit liberation, we can do only 20 dara. <laughs> but anyway, we have to do many times, like an onion, you know, many times appearing like this. So, wow, original myself is appearing like that. I'm so grateful, Chombo, and also plus morning devotion. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Megumi-san. Uh, if you're doing it every month, I have to start now and do it the whole year <laughs> because I haven't done it for some time now. Thank you so much, Megumi, for sharing. Um, next, I'd like to call on, um, let's see. Dr. Shimio, you know, Milhan's really recommended. He's like, great, great. Please call Dr. Shimio. So Dr. Shimio again. And Mrs. Shimio, if you can please share with us your gratitude. Hi, good morning, everyone. Sorry about a little too much exposure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. um, yeah, last night, uh, my wife and I watched the video of Dr. Yon's seven-day-old uh, uh, speech given to the Japanese community, uh, a group of Japanese members uh, residing in America. Um, he just spoke, he, he speaks, you know, in, in Korean. Um, he spoke just like a machine gun, one bullet. One bullet kept coming. <laughs> so again, I was very much flabbergasted with his talk. He shared with us his motto, family motto. Um, and also he shared with us his resolution, New Year resolution to um, do what kind of things, what kind of thing he wants to do in the next six years. Uh, those ideas he shared with us, so, so wonderful that, that, um, I have no choice but uniting with him, following with him, following him. I, I cannot help working so hard after hearing his speech twice, okay? Uh, so, um, yeah, I just, just want to say that. So, so much excited, so happy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, by, by Again, I, th I thought he was possessed with the spirit of God. He always says he receives revelations from God directly, right? I think that's possible because he devotes himself, loving us, loving the world, even forgetting about his own situation. So revelation, coming of revelation is possible. I really want to be like that, but I, 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 it's very difficult for me. 
<laughs> to go to that level. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Like one week ago, we had a directory, like, you know, Japanese members. Uh, and uh, we are waiting, like, record because I want to see again. So we waited, like, record. So last night, finally, we found the record. So, and uh, again, I'm so, like, uh, yeah, Dr. Young, yeah, true parent and uh, true father, true mother sent to North America. And through Dr. Young, we have to restore America and the world. I'm so, like, you know, against, I'm so felt like, like true father is talking like that, like spirit. Yeah, I'm so like respect and we have to unite and we have to restore like, you know, America and the world. And uh, we have to do like, good, we have to show good result for true mother. And yeah, I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ms. Jimio. Um, <laughs> Hey, both of you look exciting this morning. Maybe that recording can be passed around so people can see what this possessed <laughs> Doc Dion looks like. All right, brothers and sisters, uh, thank you all for sharing your gratitudes, your reflections. I hope you're all feeling a little bit you know, lighter this morning after sharing. But we're going to go into our main message today. Uh, as you notice, Doc Young is not in this room because there's an international conference call that's happening right now, and that's why he's not here. Uh, but of course, he'll be back tomorrow. And as usual, he prepared a message for us, so never missing a day. Let's welcome up our Continental Director, Dr. Chan Shik Yong. 안녕하세요. Good morning, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, clergy and ambassador for peace. 안녕하십니까. Today, I'd like to talk again about, tell people about True Parents from True Mother's Anthology Book One. I think today is our heavenly honey little bit have some certain schedule. I'd like to invite our Tao and then she can help me to read uh, today's content. Please, our Tao read this Hundo content. Tell people about your parents. To think that just because you are suffering fatigue, you want to have comfortable physical lives, a span that is quite short and not longer than 100 years is not correct. You must strive to become one with Europe so that you can liberate those in the Christian cultural sphere even one day sooner. <clears throat> Think of how unfortunate they are. For 2000 years, though Christians went through many hardships in their own way, they only became empty kernels of grain. You must let others know the truth. You must guide them to realize that only this truth, the true parent's truth, is their hope and the way for them to attain a glorious and blessed position in the future. Father's last request was for us to fulfill our responsibility as tribal messiahs. How seriously have you carried this out? Today, we are gathered in this place together with members from all over the world to celebrate the members of these two nations who have lived according to True Father's words and completed gathering 430 families as tribal messiahs. We should celebrate and encourage them, and we should each make a determination to fulfill this responsibility as well. The marriage blessing gives fallen people new life through true parents. The fallen world is a polluted and murky place, and blessed families are like clear water, the water of life. But even the clearest water will turn bad if it stagnates. It needs to flow towards the great sea. In the place where living water flows, living creatures revive. Tribal messiahs are responsible to clean this polluted world with pure living water. Thank you, Heavenly. Uh, thank you, our Tal. But even the clearest water will turn bad if it uh, stagnates, Mother said. Therefore, as long as we are alive and as long as we are breathing, 
we must move forward. We must go out and preach and work. To say that I am still alive today means that I have a mission. I am responsible for completing my spiritual body, completing my family, and loving the country and the world within the time given to me. Very important, my brothers and sisters, how we can really live in gratefully day by day. Continue. Now the tribal Messiah movement has become a giant wave sweeping across Thailand and the Philippines and through other nations in Asia as well. After having passed through the continents of Europe, North and South America, Africa and Oceania, it is moving across the ocean. And wherever this wave passes, countless people are born anew. We can expect nothing from the world as it is. The only way is for us to tell the world about true parents. When our families, tribes, nations, and the world become one with true parents, bound together in, this, in the providential will, and sweep across the five oceans and six continents, we will realize one world under God. The kingdom of heaven on earth, longed for by our heavenly parent and long awaited by all people. For this day to come, all blessed families in the world should achieve oneness in heart, oneness in body, oneness in thought, and oneness in harmony, not only with the heavenly parent, but also with true parents. Can you stand still knowing that our brothers and sisters are still out there, miserable and struggling like orphans? You must stand up. Will you do that? We must confidently testify to the world that true parents have come. You must help people outside our movement become aware of true parents' achievements and of how great they are. Do not be afraid. I say that wherever you act and reach out in the name of true parents, the support of the spiritual and earthly worlds will be with you. What is there to be afraid of then? Confidently cry out. Confidently show the world that you are true blessed families, children of true parents. Remember that this is the only way you can stand as an ancestor of a victorious true family that has guided the 7 billion people in becoming citizens of Changguk, the status we so long for. Thank you, our Tal. In 2014, to uh, you know, commemorate our father Songhua, I brought to uh, uh, heavenly tribal messiah model families from Thailand and the uh, Philippines to Changpyeong at the order of Tromada. At the time, Tromada emphasized the importance of the heavenly tribal messiahship a lot. From then on, the heavenly tribal messiah movement began to spread around the world. Let's look at uh, Trofada's word about the tribal messiah. So please read. You must fulfill your 5% portion of responsibility. I've done everything that I could do. Now you must fulfill your 5% portion of responsibility. For an individual, a family, a tribe, and a nation, this 5% portion of responsibility is the very area of your own. As of now, I am the center of the nations in the world. You, as a tribal messiah, are to be aligned vertically to the center of the nations and the world so that you can completely become one. That is all. This is why tribal messiahship is not a matter of choice. If you don't do it, your whole tribe will be accused. When a person who doesn't complete it goes to another world, he, she will be cursed by his, her descendants, hundreds of times more than the ancestors accused the fallen Adam and Eve. I am not responsible for this. I cannot tell them not to accuse you because you did not do it. You do have your 5% portion of responsibility as a tribal messiah. There is no perfection without fulfilling it. Yes. 
We must know how seriously true parents spoke about the heavenly travel Messiah mission, and everyone should fulfill these five percent responsibility. So I am very happy uh, our true parents mentioned very clearly what is the human um, portion of the five percent responsibility. That is a heavenly tribal Messiah mission. Anyone fulfill HTM mission well, then true parents really very happy and true parents recognize you fulfill your portion of responsibility as a human being, five percentage portion of responsibility. This is an incredible blessing. That's why I'd like to encourage my dear brothers and sisters without exception to fulfill this 5% portion of responsibility as a tribal mastership, and then need to register in Chanbo one. In you know, my case, Dr. Young family, our couple, our daughter's, daughter's family, and our second son's family became the Chanbo family already. Now our elder son's family will also be finish this year because they are not yet completed ancestor, you know, blessing ceremony. So then and our couple, our three, all second generation children, they can, uh, they, you know, can register Chanbo one. True mother recently strongly encouraged, not just only first generation, let even our second generation, the generation, let them fulfill heavenly tribal messiah mission. Living divine principle, recently I'm continuously talking about the life of give and take action, very, very important. I really, this is one of the really powerful content, you know, uh, our you know, true parents, uh, about the divine principle. So let's uh, really think uh, and then study how to apply, you know, the give and take action in our daily life. First of all, uh, let's uh, study again uh, from EDP content. Through the agency of universal prime energy, the subject and object elements of every entity form a common base and enter into interaction. This interaction in turn generates all the forces the entity needs for existence, multiplication and action. The interaction generating these forces through this process is called give and take action. Yes, based on this EDP content, and then let us study further what more details. God wants to give infinitely. Then what kind of person is God? When God gives us love, how much would he want to give? God's love does not have a set limit. He wants to give infinite love. Even after giving everything, God still says, because of you, I want to live in you. What is the essential element that makes this possible? It is love. God would be happy to live as a servant if that life were lived inside love. A father could feel joy even if he sees his beloved son defecate on his dining table. Love transcends law. Yeah, very interesting. When God gives us love, how much would he want to give? True Father say that God's love does not have a set limit. God is a God of infinite heart. So he wants to give to me indefinitely. God says that even after giving you everything he has, he still wants to live in you. Then what is the essence that makes this possible? It is love. If God lived inside the true love, he would even be happy to live as a servant forever. A father could feel joy even if he sees his beloved son and crawl up on his dining table and defecate. Love transcends all laws. Therefore, what we need to know is that there is no limit to, uh, to giving. However, fallen humans always have a set limit according to their own standard. When try to give to others, 
we should also reflect on how to become an infinite giver resembling the attributes of God's true love. Okay, one more slide. God has been continuously extending his love to people, but that doesn't mean he will complain saying, I have given you everything without reserve. Why do you not give back? Can God be like this? The God of absolute love is still frustrated that he has not been able to give all the love he wants to. God cannot assert himself. If God's purpose in creating men was to give perfect love, would he not stand in a position of shame even after pouring out his love because he has been unable to give perfect love? He is a God who wants to give us better things. Therefore, the more we think of God, the better we feel. If God were someone who says, I have given everything, so now you give back, we would not need him. Yeah. <laughs> Just because of God has given love to this world until now, he's not a God who say, I gave everything already. But who do you not give back? If God is the eternal parent of humankind and absolute love, he still feels sorry and feel like, uh, you know, shameful because he can't give all the love he wants to give. He is not a God who can assert that he has given everything to humans. If the principle was to give infinite and complete love when God created human, then God has not uh, not been able to give love completely so far. God wants to give to his children, human beings, forever, indefinitely, according to his attributes. God feels ashamed when giving and wants to give something better because he has the concept of love that gives indefinitely. Therefore, the more you think of such a God, the better you feel. You know, that's why you know, Christian people often say that God is good all the time. I like that. God is good all the time. It does not matter you are a fallen man. It does not matter you are a perfect man. His portion of responsibility is giving and giving, and giving, and giving. Still want to give more. His attribution of his nature is eternal. He wants to give eternally, limitlessly. Wow. What kind of God he is? How can we resemble that kind of God's nature? When I give something to my object partner or subject partner, how can we resemble that kind of God's nature? How can I give a limitlessly without any regretting and still feel ashamed because I did not give enough? You know, if a fallen man, each of them are uh, really came back to God's bosom after complete restoration, I can give more than before. I never experienced giving something after you become perfect man. I have still, you know, many things to give to my children. That is God. That is the nature of God. Wow, it is really amazing. It is really amazing. I am so grateful. I have that kind of God. You know? I have that kind of God. I have that kind of eternal parents always giving me and then serving me and sacrifice for me and investing for me. I have that kind of God. Wow. Thank God. That's why God is good all the time. All the time. If God is a good God, God, God is a good God is a God who say, I have given everything, so now you give back. It would result in breaking his principle of giving forever and indefinitely. In that respect, true love is amazing and great 
the more you think about it. Really, uh, I, I really think about God's creation and God's love. I cannot imagine as a fallen man. Our true parents, they are the ones who really practice that kind of the nature of God's heart. Thank God, thank our true parents. Today's youth ministry, how to relieve God's deep, bitter heart and sorrow. Recently, I'm continuing talking about that. Today, I want to focus on the creating God's place of rest. How to relieve God's deep, uh, deep, bitter heart and sorrow. And the day before yesterday, I am talking about the first, how to relieve God's deep, bitter heart and sorrow. And return joy is solved by resurrecting my heart through the word. Most of the people say that because they were bound by form and tradition and custom, God's word did not become our life. So God could not dwell in us, and we did not recognize the people whom God sent. That is a really problem. That's why God has a strong resentment. He really tried to approach each one of the human beings, but all of them, most of them possessed by tradition, by formality, and then by custom, by habit, you know, that kind of hypocrite. God only can deal with those who have heart, those who have sincerity. But for the men, difficult to find sincerity and heart. That's why God's problems already delay and delay, even though he sent some, you know, a central figure. People cannot recognize who, who that person is. Even though God sent the Messiah Jesus, they cannot recognize who he is because we are possessed by that kind of the external tradition, external form, external habit and customs, my own concept. That's why God has a reason. Then how to solve that problem? We need to have Really sincere heart beyond the, well, the tradition and formality and custom. Otherwise, no way to release God's heart. Secondly, in the place when Cain and Abel become one and reconcile, God's heart is relieved. In the age of the providence of restoration, most of the central figures fell in the relationship between Cain and Abel, who established the foundation of faith. Wow, that's why. You know, most of the central figure establish a foundation of faith, but most of them fail foundation of substance. That is the problem. That's why anyone do reconciliation very well, between Cain and Abel, between parents and children, between husband and wife. Wow, that is a really recording about uh, centering on Kati history. And Ka really recognized this is the way can we really uh, release God's sorrowful heart. Today, I'd like to talk about what the third way to relieve God's bitter heart, that is creating God's place of rest. In order, to, in, order, in order for us to make God happy, we must first know as, as many stories as God has formed historically. In addition, we must know and grant God's honest desire for human beings in our own. God's Peter heart was that there was no place for him to reside as he walked through the families of chosen central figures. Jesus wanted to come and form a garden of love, God's kingdom of heaven on earth, but he did not go as he wished through the word of Matthew chapter 8, 20. We can see Jesus' heart and sorrow. Jesus replied, foxes have dens, and birds have nests, but the son of a man has no place to lay his head. Seeing that Jesus who came as the Messiah and be the foxes with, 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 with the dens and birds are flying in the air, one can see how sad and lonely Jesus was artistically. Who is Jesus? Jesus is God's begotten son. He came to the earth after 4,000 years. God sacrificed incredible suffering 
But he came to the earth. Zachariah family could not accept. And then Joseph and Mary could not you know, protect Jesus. And then even John the Baptist could not accept Jesus and doubted him. And then his final problem is want to deal with his disciple, let them understand who is Jesus, but no one understands Jesus. That's why he's saying that foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of a man has no place to lay his head. Oh my God. Can you imagine? He and me. He envied the foxes with the dance. It's the Messiah. Can you imagine? He envied the bird fly in the air. How much alone he was. Can you imagine that anyone with artistically, no artistic communication? Can you imagine about that? Even His mother could not recognize, cannot become, you know, Jesus' friend. Even Joseph was like that. Even John the Baptist could not communicate artistically with Jesus. Even three disciples and 12 disciples and 70 disciples, so many people follow. But no one understands heart of Jesus. That's why Jesus cannot stay anywhere. That is the reason Jesus needs to go to the cross. No place to stay. Oh my God. Jesus, just as Jesus had nowhere to live, we can see that our God has led the problems of restoration with that heart. Jesus' lonely heart was God's lonely heart. Jesus' sorrowful heart was God's sorrowful heart. Even though he lived in God's problems, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, but no place to, for him to reside. How many people understand this one? God's people heart and sorrow is that even though there are so many families and people living on the earth, there is no place for him to reside. Most of the Jesus disciples try to take off their own yoke of pain, but no one tried to know what Jesus' suffering was, and no one tried to share Jesus' pain. This was the bitter heart and sorrow of Jesus we call them in Jesus' hand. Jesus' hand. Don't have even one to communicate artistically. You look at this Jesus photo. Wow. How much? Do you think Jesus is really glorious Jesus at that time? He was such a lonely guy. So sorrowful. He knows about the car to sorrowful situation. He really wants to settle down. But, you know, all the prepared people rejected him, persecuted him, accused him. Even he, he need to, like his mother, Maria, run away from Chakaria family. And then Joseph said that his Maria could not protect. He need to came out from the home. And he tried to meet John the, John the Baptist and ask him to recognize who he was. But he could not recognize, lay down doubt. And then his last way to walk together with Jesus and the disciples, they could not recognize who is Jesus, just only, you know, externally follow because of seeing Jesus' a miracle. Wow, really painful story. Looking at the entire Bible, there are what two uh, women, women who had a connection artistically with the Jesus situation. When Jesus uh, talked about one of the women, woman, uh, women, Jesus said that her name were, uh, would be forever celebrated wherever God was reached. That woman was Mary. 
who poured on expensive oil costing 300 denarius on Jesus' feet for his funeral. Many know that Jesus is going to die. And then, and then Mary poured on expensive oil to the Jesus' feet. She knows Jesus' heart. That's why Jesus is saying that, you know, just talk about, you know, that woman, her name would be forever celebrated wherever God's word reached. The other woman was the uh, no, Samarot, Samarot, uh, whom Jesus met while passing through the you know, Samaria. When Jesus talked to the woman, he really uh, he uh, revealed himself for the first time as the Messiah who is coming. He did not use a metaphor for the Messiah. This really happened once in. Jesus' entire life. When Jesus said, the Messiah you are waiting for is me. The uh, Samet, uh, Samaritan woman immediately abandoned her water jar and followed Jesus, indicating her high level of heart. She is not Jewish. She realized the word of Jesus from the really high level. She did not follow Jesus after seeing his wonders and miracles. That's not matter what kind of wonders and, um, and the miracles. She immediately recognized who is Jesus. That's why Jesus first time met this kind of woman and then confessed. He, Jesus showed his own identity. I am the Messiah. Because she already have such kind of heart to accept. As soon as she heard Jesus' words, she quickly realized who he was. This woman had a base of faith on which God could work just by Jesus' word. When Jesus conducted wonders and miracles, he told his disciples and those who followed him not to say that he did them. But when he saw this stranger, the Samaritan woman, he directly believed that he was the Messiah. However, the Jews and disciples who were supposed to follow Jesus distrusted and then persecuted him. So Jesus lost his foundation and had to face the cross and die lamenting. Many could also say they followed the Lord, but no one knew the Lord's situation. Then why was there no one who could share the same situation as the Lord in this way or die along with the Lord at the time of death? This is because Jesus' disciples focus only on their problems disregarding Jesus' wall of heart. Today it can, it can be said that after we listening the divine principle, we talk to of all our heavy burdens through true parents. Unification Church members became people who all speak in spiritual world and beat when they look at the members. Although we have been liberated from the realm of the death through the divine principle and the blessing. The important thing is, however, however, is whether we have become individuals and families where God can reside going beyond our own circumstances and positions? It is whether we have become an altar of families and churches that can grant God's wishes. There may be people who are grateful for being saved through the divine principle and blessing and say, oh, I am saved. I am saved in the name of my true parents. I have a guarantee to enter the kingdom of heaven. I, my, I, my job already completed as a Chanbo one. Oh, I am saved. I am saved in the name of my true parents. Thank you, Father. However, how many of our children are there who say they will liberate God? This is the problem that each of us 
should seriously reflect on that, reflect on today. How many people are there who are alive by God's word and conveys God's blessing to community? How many individuals can be established by God and work on his on his behalf? How many people can God really can call his child? How many people can share and sympathize with God's bitter heart and sorrow? We really feel in our lives and in the course of the providence of restoration with each repeated failures that is extremely difficult for us to feel God's bitter heart and sorrow as something substantial. God comes to this earth with his harm. He is searching for sons and daughters who can relieve his bitter heart and sorrow. How many people will inherit such a bitter heart and sorrow of our poor God and go out to the front line and struggle on behalf of God? My brothers and sisters, to this way, to this way, we can see that we have faced numerous difficulties and trials due to various conflicts and struggles of our individual and family problems. But what we need to know is that we are in a period of the bearing fruit. However, whenever I look at myself, who have still not been revived by the word, I need to think whether or not I give more obstruction or crosses to God and to the parents in their past. Therefore, we should know God's bitter heart and sorrow. Let that become the strength for our life of faith and become reliable sons and daughters who move closer to our true parents. What is the way to relieve God's bitter heart that is creating God's place of rest? My brother senses, it is whether or not I have become my body and mind that God can dwell. It is how to home becomes that God can dwell. It is whether God becomes a church that can, God can dwell. Jesus could not find any place he can rest. God cannot find any place he can rest. My brothers and sisters, that's why we really need to grow up. We need to really understand God's heart and God's sorrow, God's suffering, God's difficulties. And then we can cry out and then we can say, that, say God, God, please rest. I will be responsible for you. I really want to liberate for you. I really want to comfort you, Heavenly Father. So far, how much you sacrifice and suffer so much all mankind for me, for my family. Now, it's a time I need to do for you, Heavenly Father. We need to have that kind of determination. We need to have that kind of filial sons and daughters. Then God can release his resentment, his heart. Let God be my body, my family, and my church where God can dwell forever in our heart. There is a way to relieve God's sorrow and God's, you know, harm. Thank you very much, my brothers and sisters. 감사합니다. Thank you, Dr. Young, on today's morning devotion. Uh, key takeaways, make ourselves a place where God can live, a place where God can rest. Be a temple for that. Brothers and sisters, let's go into our breakouts. Spend the next seven minutes digesting, reflecting, and sharing anything that you gained from today's morning devotion so we can grow in our understanding of what was shared. And we'll be back here, we'll be back here to share with everyone else. So we'll see you all in seven minutes.
<laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful sharing. I did. I was with uh, Tyndall and Ermgard. There was a just very a lot of heart being shared in our breakout, as well as with Dr. Kylie and Maria Kylie. Uh, Sister Maria couldn't finish her thought, so I'd like to just call on Dr. Kylie and Maria Kylie to share um, their reflection from today's morning devotion. You're still muted, Dr. Kylie. There you go. Um, I was growing up really admiring Jesus, said he was able to give his life in order to liberate us from our sin. And we admired Jesus so much. But the concept about Jesus suffering never occurred to me. And I think to most Christians, it doesn't occur. So it's really a totally new concept, and I really have to learn to identify with it and then to transmit it to other people. It's going to be a, a big task. So we'll look, what are you thinking about it? That's very strange. And so uh, it, I really have to internalize it and eventually, you know, to be able to convey it to other people about Jesus' suffering and God's suffering. So I'm very grateful because it's really a new concept and uh, I will work with it and identify with it so I also can transmit it to other people. All right. Thank you. I, I feel as if uh, this is a revolutionary stuff we're dealing with here. Uh, we do have those stories about Jesus' suffering, uh, his lament about being in a worse situation than foxes or birds of the air. Uh, but it, it seems to me it's not part of our Western uh, Christian psyche that Jesus is, a suffer, is, is suffering. Even though we, we see the images of the cross, it's kind of formalized. Uh, in, the, in the Catholic Church, we, we pray the 14 uh, stations of the cross. And as an altar boy, I used to uh, hold the cross underneath the station as people were praying the station and it was very moving but but somehow it didn't reach the level of heart for me anyway um what's revolutionary i think about father's teaching is that we not only about the suffering of god and the suffering of jesus but that that should be the orientation of our life to relieve his han that that's that's the most important thing in, in what we're doing. And we, and we believe he's Han through fulfilling tribal messiahship, for, through becoming Chunbo couples. Um, this, is, this is completely reorienting. And, and uh, I value that. And Dr. Young is helping us to grasp that concept. Uh, he's diving deeply into True Father's words and helping us to realize what a uh, uh, what God is experiencing, and the one one more thing I want to add is that I think it's really valuable to have Jesus and Father as examples of the kind of suffering that God is going through, because we have a physical body, we can identify with their suffering uh, in a way more easily than we can with the that of the invisible God. So through understanding their suffering we can understand God's suffering more. Thank you, Dr. Young, for opening our hearts to this important fact. Thank you, Michael and Maria. I just uh, came back from the international conference call, and then I just hear the Michael and then Maria's beautiful reflection. You know, when I deliver this message to you, you know, this morning, and then after I giving, I, I could not control my tears. Whole day, I felt like she just came to me. True Father came to me. I don't know how really comfort them, how to release their harm. Really, I today have an incredible and spiritual experience with Jesus, really. When I understand inner his heart more and more, how miserable, miserable he was. 
So we need to understand, even our, our, at least our member, we need to understand his inner heart and suffering as my own suffering, as a child of Jesus. We need, really need to comfort him. And we need to carry on what he, uh, why, what he could not fulfill his job. And then that is our job to do. So from the beginning, we need to understand his heart and his inner situation in a situation first. Thank you so much, Dr. Michael and Maria, for your beautiful reflection. Kamsamida. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kylie. Thank you, Maria. Just such very sincere and insightful. I do also think that this is very revolutionary. It's great to have your parents um, and Jesus as the examples of God's suffering. Now, on to uh, the next reflection. Um, let's go to Son Willet. Son Willet, if you could please unmute and share with us your reflection from today's morning devotion. Still muted. There it is. Dr. Young, thank you so much for this morning. No, yes, I feel same thing like you. Jesus was the lonely man, the son of God. He had no, no way to go. Nobody understood. So we can understand God's sorrow. And uh, he, he watched all the Jesus' suffering. Also to the parents, went through so much lonely course. <sighs> Nobody to discuss, true parent, true father, and nobody to discuss. <laughs> he has to go through this kind of suffering, only God. But the, he, he was the comfort guy. He never, never say comfort to true father, God. True father, when he went to the spiritual world, before he left, last word is the last word. I gave everything. You have a neutral mother. You have to fulfill, fulfill your mission. Build ideal family, ideal family. Educate the second generation. Save the world until until Johnny Cook established. If we you don't complete your mission, you will get punished. So this is a fear, fears, fear of true father's word, very serious. And I had a dream 30 years ago when we going around IOW's mission. God showed me, I was standing inside greenhouse, very, very warm and bright. And the gosh, there is the crops growing. Crops growing, and I pick one, uh, you know, grain, and then I, I ate. That tastes so good and very crispy. I enjoyed it like a perfect ripe. And then when I woke up, father saying, everything ready for harvest in this world. You have any traumas, I go out. Go pick all the harvest God 
ready to harvest pick so we are living in this <laughs> this time this whole world is uh, absolutely need God's guidance absolutely need us we have to tell them why we are living in our individually you precious God's children we have to educate them. We have to meet the pastors. We have to be seriously, tell them. And the true father said, when you witness, when you go to door to door, sometimes you need to cry in front of them. They don't know what time we are living in. We have to say true parents came. John Earth, you can cry in front of that person. You can save their way. True Father said, education, his education, we have to know. We have to truly practice. So brothers and sisters, true mothers crying out every day. Are you really fulfilling your mission? I think we have a great mission in this year. Let's keep health. Let's God hold God to give a great health. We can do. We can save this world. Thank you so much, son. We let have for your really tearful, heartfelt, such a beautiful sharing. And also you are one of the really great exemplary case to the Heavenly Tribal Messiah Mission and Outreach. I all the time appreciate your great contribution, hard work. Thank you very much. Our son will let couple. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, son will it, for sharing with us just very sincerely about how you feel um, towards what was shared today, but more so Jesus' heart and our true parents. Friends, this is on to our announcement for today. <laughs> Not to bring the mood down or anything, but uh, feel free to invite people to joining on this morning devotion experience. Um, they, I think they call this a weeping church at some point. And so, yeah, continue to invite them, bring them here, direct them to edu.familyfed.org. That's where everything morning devotion is stored, including an archive, I believe, of Dr. Kylie's works as well, and the translation and the Zoom link, and pretty much everything you want to know about morning devotion is on there. And so, Feel free to direct them there. If you're joining us for the first time, we have Family Federation. You can learn more about us by going to familyfed.org. That's familyfed.org. And if you take a look at the chat, there'll be a link to donate to support this ministry. So feel free to click that to support. If you're online, just go to the description of the video. So that's on YouTube or on Facebook. Just go to the description and there should be a link. And last but certainly not least, I said this yesterday, but this coming Saturday night, Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, there is the second prayer rally. Prayer rally. Um, last time, like I said, we had Paula White. This time we're having Mike Pence together with True Mother um, sharing on this. So if you'd like to be a part of the live audience, so this, is a, this means Korea can see you and you can see them. <laughs> and so if you'd like to be part of that, there, I, think, I believe there's always about 75 spots for America. Um, you can click the link in the chat. Click the link in chat, fill out the information, but please, it's a, it's when you register, it's a spot that's reserved for you. So please make sure you can make it. That's 7.30 p.m. Eastern, Central one hour, three hours Westing, four or five and on. So that's it. Also, if you're watching online, that's why you should join the Zoom because you won't get the link if you're on YouTube. So, <laughs> all right, on to our main uh, musical offering for today. I'd like to invite, actually, yep, you guys know her. She's one of our, she's one of our great MCs, uh, and she actually, she's going to be coming on right after me. So, uh, without with without further ado, I'd like to welcome up Ilya and Diane Hack. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Oh la 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 Diane, Diane, hug! I I want to hug you, hug, hug, hug you. Oh, we miss you. We're, we're yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, our, yeah, thank you for today's morning devotion, Dr. Young, and for our musical offering. We know that Christmas already passed, but um, the song is basically, it's called The Grown Up Christmas List. 
And it talks about how when we're young, we always wish for like a gift uh, from our parents for like, you know, something that's like maybe meaningless, but, you know, like dolls or like, yeah, we just want it. But this song really talks about like how when we grow up, uh, we don't wish for those things anymore. We actually want to heal the world and we actually want wars to stop and we want to help others instead of just getting Christmas gifts. Um, So I hope you can enjoy it, even if it's after Christmas, but it's New Year. (laughs) So I hope you enjoy it. All right. And 
fight would always win And love would never end This is my grown up Christmas list This is my only and own life wish This is my grown up Christmas My God, bravo, 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 Diana, you know, our, your couple. Today's a song I really want to offer to our beloved Jesus. You know, your song is really very, very timely. I'd like to offer to our beloved Jesus. I think he was happy to hear your couples singing today. Once again, thank you so much. Our Diane and Mr. Diane Huck, I want to hug you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Ilya. That was so beautiful. <laughs> it's a great way to wrap up uh, the Christmas season. Thank you for offering such a beautiful song and welcome back from Kenya. <laughs> uh, I've heard from both of you already, but it sounds like you had a wonderful time. And actually, I don't know if you met with uh, John Kirkley. It looks like he's been lurking there for the past couple of months. So <laughs> that would have been interesting. All right, brothers and sisters, it all wraps up uh, the musical offering for today, but we're going to go into our closing prayer. And uh, for today, because, uh, you know, we couldn't hear from, from Aunt Louise <laughs> uh, reading morning devotion, I'd like to call on Heavenly Honey, if you could please close out in prayer. <laughs> well, please unmute. There you go. Um, join me in prayer. Our dearest heavenly parent, our dearest true parents, our beloved Jesus, um, we open our hearts today to you and receive your beautiful words, your, your love, your infinite giving, endless giving. We, you, every day, what has it taken for us to finally be able to hear, to be able to listen, and to be able to really, really assimilate your words so they, your word becomes our life. What, what price was paid by, by Jesus, by our true parents, so that finally your love could be translated into words so that we could really hear these words and then live them and then love as you love and give as you love as you live as you give father we know that true parents and jesus had to pay a price to to discover the words to discover your heart your love and then to be able had to pay the price to open the gate so that we could eventually be able to be and and become your sons and daughters by the word and by your love and by your heart we are so grateful to be here together as a family of your sons and daughters learning growing receiving father with with the great hope that this will liberate your heart, and this will bring you joy. And through this, this will be the way that you can love through us. You can speak through us. You can, you can embrace others. You can relieve their suffering. You can, you can bring them back, Father, to where they always should have been. May we be your arms and your, your eyes, your, your ears, your mouth, but especially let us be your heart and your heart of love, knowing how much you long to have all your children home. We are so grateful for this, for this time, this time of, of you, of, of true mother, of, of especially our morning devotion, Holy Community, where Dr. Yang is really translating 
and chewing up all the the words of life, the words of truth, the words of love, and bringing us back alive so that we can be able through this become the people that can actually change and shift the morality the really the the culture of north america and even through that be able to affect the world you've given us so many blessings let us really become people who can share those blessings with others we're sorry so many times we don't get it how many hours did father stand there and we just didn't get it so we pray that through this time we can get it and we can we can assimilate but also we can give it and father we determine today to each day be better each day really drink these words live them and give them um thank you um we pray um for for especially our true mother's health and and know that she stands and walks as true parents and that she knows she's not alone that all of us are with her in heart in love in giving we thank you again for the great blessings you give us and we pray this in the name of all blessed central families and and Stephen Louise honey aju aju thank you heavenly honey what a great and beautiful pray is really i'm so moved by your incredible and heartfelt prayer and jonghwa together yeah with the honey thank you so much kamsahamida thank you god bless you thank you heavenly honey for wrapping us up today with a beautiful beautiful prayer Brand sisters this this wraps up today's morning devotion. Thank you for joining us. Uh we'll be back here bright and early tomorrow at 6:00 a.m. Eastern. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye everyone. Kamsamida. Thank you. Have a nice day.